as Sue said, I am an infrared astronomer by occupation. So you might think that I would be talking about flips in astronomy. Uh, for example, something like Galileo, um, who found that the sun was at the center of our solar system, unlike the belief at the time. Or perhaps something like what Vera Rubin discovered. She found that the stars and the galaxies in our universe were enfolded in the gravitational grip of dark matter, matter that is not luminous, like the ordinary matter we know. In fact, uh, we now know today that the universe is comprised of only 5% of ordinary matter. The other 95% is partially the dark matter that Vera found, but also something even more mysterious called dark energy. This was a rather substantial change. No, I'm not gonna talk about things like that. <laughs> <laughs> even though I just did. Um, <laughs> what I'm going to talk about instead are flips in definitions that have defined young women as they pursue careers in science. Vera received her PhD in 1954. That was the time when most women did not, in fact, have PhDs in astronomy. Consequently, she spent a lot of her time mentoring young women trying to convince them to move forward to, to uh, work in astronomy or some other scientific career. Uh, she was fairly successful, except that even today, a very small percentage of the faculty at universities uh, around the US are women. Uh, let me give a personal example. Um, when I first went to the University of Rochester, in 1971, I was the only women, woman out of 30 in the department. Today, 10% of the faculty are women, an improvement. <laughs> Vera, as I say, spent a lot of time mentoring young women. And in fact, uh, there were several things she had to say about it. One of them was, worldwide, <laughs> half of the brains are in women. <laughs> Not surprising. But she, not to be outdone, a Chine, an ancient Chinese person said, women hold up half the sky. So uh, I also spend time mentoring young women in our department, not surprisingly. Um, and I tell them that it's not unfeminine to be an astronomer. When I, after I said things like that, I started thinking about what is the definition of to be feminine. Well, femininity is def defined as the trait of behaving in a way that is typical of women. There is so much room for interpretation <laughs> in that particular <laughs> definition. I mean, for example, how about meek, uh, dependent, submissive, unassertive, all of those things. I don't however, believe that that is a reasonable way to look at femininity. In fact, I've always felt that women have to be assertive to get ahead in science. Otherwise, you cannot uh, succeed. And so it's, uh, it's a definition that needs flipping, definitely needs flipping. Now, another thing that I started thinking of when we started uh, talking or considering Vera and her mentoring is what does, how is mentor defined? Well, interestingly enough, a mentor is defined as a person who is experienced and trusted as an advisor. Now that's fine. That would be a perfectly good definition if you left it there. However, the example given is he was her trusted advisor until his death. The implication being, of course, that mentors could only be male. And then looking at the verb to mentor, to advise or train someone, especially a younger colleague. Well, that too is open to interpretation and the rest of the time, my time here, I'll be talking about how 
uh, younger is not necessary in a, a mentor. Even though in this picture we have a male, an older male, and some younger folks in the image. When I was a high school student, STEM subjects were not very popular with my peers. In fact, <laughs> it turned out that my boyfriend at the time, who was on the football team, was advised by his colleagues not to date me because they said, she's a brain. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, I'm not sure whether they meant that was because I was studying STEM subjects or whether it was because I was a girl who was studying STEM subjects. Fortunately, my mentor at the time, my mother, um, told me to ignore them. They're ignorant. <laughs> and that was fine. When I went on to university, I was lucky enough in my third year to work for a wonderful woman, Helen Sawyer Hogg. There's a picture of Helen. Um, she was a wonderful astronomer, a noted educator, and she taught to us by example, not by words. Nobody used the words self-esteem in those days. It was just by, by uh, observing how things went. And so I learned a lot, and I learned that you should, that you should not worry about such things as whether you can uh, uh, pursue a career in science and get married. This is the sort of thing that was the concern of my colleagues when I was young. It sounds ridiculous today, but at that time, that was, that was the truth. However, we still, we still have women, young women, who are concerned um, about their role in life. They think of astronomy as a male-dominated field, which it is. And they, they wonder whether they are going to be able to succeed. My, um, my experience uh, is that we have a lot to learn from uh, a variety of, of our mentors, both women and the young. And I wanted to tell you about my experience next when I went to the University of Rochester. It turns out that computers started to become a very important part of our life in astronomy. And today, of course, they dominate it. But at the time, in 1952 or three, women were computers. Here's an example of the women at JPL. You may have seen, for example, the, the, the current movie, A Hidden Figures, where we have women computers. Helen, the, my mentor, Helen Sawyer Hogg in the next image, uh, was a human computer herself in 1929 at the uh, Harvard College Observatory. But something started happening. Early on, when we wanted to run a program, we carried a box of punch cards over to the mainframe computer uh, in order to, to run our programs. Desktops didn't exist. Laptops didn't exist. iPads certainly didn't exist. Even handheld computers did not exist. Um, but they started to appear. And then the internet appeared, wonderful. And then the first browsers appeared. Not anything like our current browsers, but wonderful nonetheless. But the thing that transitioned me the most was that the young students started arriving on our campuses. And they had grown up with computers. And they were so much more able than I was to be able to cope with this. And so the young students became my mentors. I mean, to this day, I have met students who are my mentors in this case. <laughs> this is uh, a picture of my current mentor, Amy Meinzer, 34 years my junior. She wasn't even born when I arrived at the University of Rochester. <laughs> She's holding in her hands two cups. On the left-hand side, it's a visible image. You can't tell this, but one is hot and one is cold. One is coffee, one is liquid nitrogen. On the right, we have, <laughs> we have an infrared image of Amy 
Um, I am an infrared astronomer after all, so I have to show you that you can see much different things in the infrared. And the liquid nitrogen is black, the coffee is white, and Amy's nose is cold. <laughs> but Amy has a lot to recommend her. She is a brilliant young woman. Um, she is the principal investigator of an experiment with which I am associated. In fact, our group has developed the cameras for this mission. It's called NeoCam. Here's NeoCam. Uh, this is an artist's conception of what it will be. The red dots you see in the picture, those are asteroids. Finding asteroids be fi before they find us. NeoCam, the experiment that Amy is the principal on, is looking for these NEOs, near-Earth objects, that have been diverted from their normal orbits between Mars and Jupiter into orbits that cross the Earth's orbit. And that being the case, they might hit us. That's not a good thing. <laughs> the dinosaurs, for example, became extinct because of a very large uh, near-Earth object a long time ago. Um, NeoCam should be able to find most of the NEOs that are 140 meters in size and larger. But uh, let me put that into perspective. 140 meters would demolish New York City, I mean, for example. And so it, we'll see smaller ones as well, but we don't even know about the 140 meter ones today, much less the smaller ones. Occasionally, as in the next slide, you'll see um, the Chelyabinsk meter hurtling through the sky unexpectedly. We didn't know it was going to even impact. It caused some destruction in the sense that it broke windows and a few people were injured, but nobody died. And so that was a good thing. We have to be able to find these things so that NASA can divert them. And you have to know where they are in order to be able to divert them. You have to have good orbits for them. That's what NeoCam's all about. Amy has complete command of all of the details, not only the asteroid science, but also the launch vehicle, the detector arrays that are in the cameras, the optics, everything. Uh, she is a wonderful mentor to me. So as you can tell, I'm not exactly the youngest speaker today. <laughs> and the fact is that it might be just because my mentors of my youth have been dead for some years that I may think now that you can learn from the young. But I don't believe that's the case. I believe we all have something to learn from the young. For example, I have five granddaughters ranging in age from 19 to 32. They teach me a lot mainly because their life experiences have been so different from mine. For example, they teach me about changed concepts of marriage, of raising children, um, that gender need not be biological, that the workforce may be virtual. They have many things to teach me. As my, youngest, my oldest granddaughter, the 32-year-old, said to me when she read an early version of this talk, we all benefit if we're open to learning from whoever the source is. And so she was thinking of whether you're young or whether you're old. That's entirely correct. Miranda is right. And so I just want to leave her generation with the idea that femininity is not impaired by becoming pursuing your goals, being a scientist, that's one thing. The second thing is your mentors need not be male, they need not be old, they can be young. And it's my responsibility as a member of my generation to make sure that these outmoded definitions are flipped. Thank you. <laughs>